Most people in life are looking at how do I make a life worth living in return with having. When my life started becoming more worth living after I lost my favorite gal of Japan, who was my life partner for the longest time of my life, beyond much longer than my college girlfriend, I have to say that I was lost. And during that time, I also lost a really important business female friend who I really loved. And I was really falling more in love with her with each day that I was losing my life partner. But that's not really important to most people. When I lost them both, I was pretty broken. And a woman came into my life who was really caring and kind. And she came in through an unusual space, like most people meet people, through a class of sorts. And I didn't pay much attention to her at first, but during the break we started talking. And I got her digits, I got her information, and I reached out to her a little later. And practically that very evening we just started talking and texting and having a good time. And I tell you, she was a very caring individual. And that's a life soul, a life person, a life partner, a soulmate that I really miss. And when I talk about these things about women, I don't expect someone to understand if you don't value women. We know that men across America devalue women. They devalue women that are American. They devalue women that are Indian. They come out with the present. They devalue and dehumanize Chinese. They devalue and dehumanize Polynesians. They devalue and, and dehumanize Japanese women, especially. And a lot of the players who went to war brought back war wives. And they went on to marvelous lives with their husbands because they chose them. They chose to get themselves out of Japanese living and move across the sea to be loved like nobody's business. But in life, men have the right to love people, and we can love people for all kinds of reasons. But we also get aligned with people at different parts in our life because God is saying he's not pleased with who he's chosen. And if the partner we've chosen is not on our lifeline, is not participating in Christ's house or a Catholic house or a Lutheran house or a spiritual house of any kind that is like ours, we're probably not right, and we're probably not partnered right. And what God expects and what he talks about in all the works on loving partners is you have to be equally yoked. It's not about having the fanciest of spaces. It's not about having the most uh, incredible romances. It's about can you really talk? Can you really express yourself? Are you really heard? Are you really listened to? Can you really cuddle? Can you really snuggle? Can you really do the things that are outside of just simple acts of sex? And that's what I'm talking about. When you're looking for a life partner, you better fucking know where they're going in life. Because if they're planning a marvelous career for themselves, then they might have time to end their life. But there are also men like there were in Japan who literally built, lived their life 12 hours a day at the office. And by the time they got home, there was food available to them that their wife would prepare, prepare but there was no relationship. There was an arranged marriage, and there was a lot of that. So we have to talk about truth, that the truth of life, the truth of what God expects for people, is that you find someone who loves you and cares for you and really wants you in their life. It really values you for you. That no matter what you say, no matter what you do, you're always safe. You're never going to be harmed for what you think. You're never going to be embarrassed for the fact that you might say something that might be a little of color and your gracious spouse will step in with some joke or something that doesn't deface you, that doesn't humiliate you, that doesn't embarrass you, that doesn't physically or emotionally assault you. And that's something that a gentleman does. A gentleman takes the brunt of his wife's jokes but then graciously steps away from it so that she can either see her missteps or just get back in line with him. You see, the dance partner of our life might not be able to waltz, but they might be able to boogie. And they might not be able to boogie or they could waltz. It doesn't really matter. The point is that life is a dance. And there's a great country western song about that, but what we're really after are the people in our life who light us up, who make us feel better than ever, who really care for us and for the long term. And maybe that was only a two-month sort of intellectual, spiritual romance, but it has impacted my life to the point that I started writing again. That I finished a lot of projects because of that gal. And she was my inspiration to do some of the work I've done. Whereas another gal is inspiration for a lot of other things that I've done. You see, when I was working and when I was partners and when I was married, I was inspired to work because I had a family. And I had responsibilities as the father and the parent and the husband of that family. 